Good afternoon, all that are watching. We praise God today for you for taking out time to listen to God's word. And we give you greetings from the Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church, 20 Oak Street, Hiram, Georgia, where everybody is somebody, Christ is all in all, making disciples and building the family unit. We give honor to God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, His precious Holy Spirit. We give honor to our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jeffrey R. Wimber, Sr. We give honor to all of you, God's children. We all owe God a great big thank you, because if it had not been for God on our side, where would we be? Good afternoon to all again, and hope everyone is having a pretty good day. As we go into our lesson of Bible study, let us turn to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and as you're finding that, we'll offer up a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you again for all your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity to learn of your word. We thank you for enriching our lives, God. We thank you for keeping us in your care. Asking now, God, that you would give us wisdom and knowledge of your word, that we may continue to run the race that you have set before us. Continue to allow us to be in your good will, Father, that all we do is pleasing in your sight. Father, we thank you, praise, and glorify you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, is what we'll be looking at. And we will look at verse 24 as our main thought, I guess, if you want to put it that way. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 24. And it reads, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And so we, we're, we're, we're looking how Paul is categorizing us as Christians not to give up, uh, not to despair. Uh, uh, even Jesus said those that put their hand on the plow and look back not worthy when you take your hands off that means that you don't want to continue uh, and we always have to count the cost uh, of what we're doing is it worth it uh, is it beneficial can I finish uh, these are these uh, the, these things that we don't consider we just look at the prize but we don't consider the process uh, yes the prize is, is good and sometimes we have to weigh you know do I really want to run this race or do I really want to go forth and do this uh, and give up so much or go through so much uh, but it, with, with God everything is, is good and very good so if he called you to it he will bring you through whatever situation you're going through so or whatever obstacles that may be in your way uh, so uh, when God gives us a task uh, he has already known the end of it and has a prize waiting for us we just have to be willing to go forth and get the prize. Amen. And so today we'll be talking a little bit about why we don't give up. Even in our world today, as this pandemic going on, this pestilence in the land, this famine, if you want to say, we, we, we don't give up because we know who we have on our side. Uh, with God, all things are possible. And so we, we, we continue to run the race. We continue to stay in the race. We continue to continue to live uh, and have life. As a matter of fact, as the Bible says, that you may have life and have life more abundantly. The uh, Bible also says we're more than conquerors, uh, meaning that uh, we win, regardless of uh, what the situation may bring, as long as we stay in. Uh, I've never seen a boxer uh, not fight a fight and win the prize. He has to fight the fight in order to win the belt, in order to win the prize. So we have to stay in the race. We have to stay in the fight. We have to stay with God, and God will make everything all right as long as we don't give up, as long as we don't faint. Amen. And so now we, we're, we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, and Paul here is, is, is talking about himself in, in, in a certain aspect. But he also gives us a uh, good, clear understanding uh, of what we should be doing as well. And so if we go back to verse 19, we'll just start there and work our way back to 24 uh, and 25. We'll see what, in context, what Paul is saying. 
And so he says, uh, verse 19, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servants unto all that I might gain the more. And so Paul understands that he's a free man. He, 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 he's free in God. And he has the liberty to do what God has ordained him to do, just as we do. And so now, once he's used this liberty for uh, God, then he will gain others. Because now they'll see that he's so humble, he's so submissive, he's so uh, attentive to their needs that he's able to help them run their race as well. And, and so sometimes we do have to reach back. And, and, and pull those along with us or pull those up where we are. We have to get down on their level so they can see instead of just trying to push them and keep them down and run off and leave them, uh, having the me, myself, and I mentality. Uh, yes, we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. So whatever we can do to help them, that's what we should be doing. And so once we do that, others might see, and as Paul said, we might gain the more. More might be willing to, uh, see how God is working in our lives in order to join God. Uh, as I always say, you know, a lot of people can't understand Holy Ghost, but they can understand tangible things. And so when God has blessed us with those tangible things, we use those things to and for his glory to show others that it is possible instead of just using it to see what I got you don't have, gloating and, and, and boasting about ourselves. These are the times that we should gloat and boast about God. And so now he's saying he gained more. Verse 20 says, and unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. To them, I was like them. I walk with them. I talk with them. I, 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 I put myself in the position that they can understand me. And now I can talk to them about God and they can understand. And so as stated before, we, we, we sometimes have to bring ourselves down to pick others up, uh, not just stay up and tell the others, well, just get like me. Sometimes we do have to humble ourselves. We do have to give up our right that somebody else is wrong so they can come along and be about God's business. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. And Paul knew that we can't just live by the law. We now, because of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, what God did in raising him from the dead, now we no longer have to live by the law. Uh, we're not governed by the law. We follow the rules of the law, but the law don't save. Only Jesus saves. And so now God, uh, uh, Paul here is telling them that now we're under grace. We don't have to follow or, or live by the laws. Grace now has us that we can live by it. Verse 21, to them that are without the law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. Because Christ is the one that saved us. Christ is the one that came and was that example to us. As Paul stated further, uh, the law was just our schoolmaster, but Christ is the one now that's the master teacher, that's the high priest, that's the one that's guiding us and leading us. Uh, to what we are supposed to do. So, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So Paul is putting himself in the position that if not me, then who? If not now, then when? And sometimes we have to think on that same lines that when will it be time that somebody speak about God? somebody lived a life that's pleasing in God's sight that he might gain others. And so Paul is now at this time, and, we're, and as now we are, uh, we should be the one that, that shouldn't have a hard time to do what's right. We are uh, in a point in time that others might should be able to see our good works but glorify God, as Paul is, is, is doing here now. Verse 22, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. Didn't go in saying, listen to me, I know all this, uh, I'm strong, I, I know what I'm doing, so y'all just pull in. So he gradually brought them along that were weak. How did he do it? Something Maybe he had to go in and say, okay, let's, let's see what you got. Let's look at what you're doing, and maybe I can enhance it, but I need to get in with you 
to see what you got. Like a good teacher, a good teacher will ask the right questions to the students to see what they know and, and, and how much do they of that do they know. So then now they'll know what to teach. So Paul is probably doing this same thing to get down to their level to see what they're doing, how they're doing it, what they're thinking, how they're thinking, and now giving them the opportunity to learn of God on their level. Uh, we, we just can't go in and throw in uh, uh, theories and, and all these things <clears throat> to a, a, a new Christian. We must take our time with them, mature them, nurture them, water them, give them plant light and whatever, stick around with them. We just can't say, okay, now you're saved, you're on your own. We are the ones, if we brought them in, we should be able to walk with them and talk with them, answer their questions. Uh, you know, a lot of people run away from Christianity because uh, when someone, when they come to ask questions or, or, or things of that nature, what they don't know, they don't ever get an answer. It's okay not to know, but find an answer. Find someone that knows the answer. Report back to them. Bring them along. Uh, don't just, I don't know, figure it out. That doesn't work. It never worked. So what we have to do is be attentive to those that are hungry for the word and help feed them. Amen. Uh, as the old saying say, you can give a man a fish and just eat for a day. But if you teach him, you eat forever. And that's what Paul is trying to convey to the Corinthians and what he's trying to convey to us. Um, all right. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. So whatever position they are, I'm trying to get on their level to bring them up. If they're rich, I know how to act rich or talk rich. If they're poor, I know how to act poor, talk poor, whatever. Uh, smart, I play the part to gain them to Christ. Uh, because sometimes you're too poor to pay attention or you're too rich to think that I don't need anything else. And so that person of Christ has to come in and be that conduit, that, that, that thing that says, okay, well, if, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So Paul was that conduit. Paul was that middleman. Paul was that one that was able to uh, get in, fit in, and then teach so everybody could be better. And that's what we uh, need in this world, that, that, that somebody can come in and, and teach so all can be better. Not the big eyes, not the little yous, not the rich, not, not those that are favorable, but everybody can come in. The, 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 the lower class, middle class, and the high class, everybody can come in and learn of Jesus and live the right way. Verse 23, <clears throat> and this I do for the gospel's sake. It's not because Paul wanted to be famous. It's not because Paul wanted to be rich and he wanted them to give him all the glory, praise, and honor, the monies, and all these other good titles and whatnot. He did it for the gospel's sake. If you're doing anything other than what God has commissioned you to do for the reason of God, it's all for naught. You're fulfilling the lust of the flesh because you want this, you want that, you need this, you want that. Uh, uh, Paul said, I'm doing this for the gospel's sake. So what is the gospel? The good news. The good news of who? The good news of Jesus Christ, that he came, died, uh, rose again for our justification, sanctification, and one getting up morning when God calls us home, our glorification. So he did it all for the gospel's sake, <clears throat> that I may be partaker thereof with you. So now he's bringing all of us together, not just for his cause, but for our cause. Not because I just want to make it, but because we can make it. One can put a thousand in flight, two can put 10,000. So we're, there's strength in numbers. Once we get together and, and, and come on one accord, uh, like the days of, of, of in Acts when uh, they were all in one place and on one accord and the, and the, and the, and the that was came a mighty Russian wind. That was the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost met them there because they was doing the, they was single-minded. Christ, Christ, Christ. God, God, God. Let's be about God. So when we reassemble ourselves into the sanctuaries, let us be on one accord, praising God and see what God does for us on one accord. One accord that 
that it's for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Not the owner of it, not, not the overseer of it, but a partaker. Part of it belongs to me. Part of it belongs to you. We all go up together. Amen. Verse 24. Now ye know that they which run in a race run all. You don't just have one person in a race. You have multiple people because it's a race. First one to the finish line, he gets the prize. <clears throat> but run is all, but one receiveth the prize. All of us going to run, but one going to get that earthly trophy. In this, all of us run to God, and all of us get the reward. Amen. So run that you may obtain. So now Paul is putting it in the athletic arena. Uh, in order to get the prize, you have to finish the race. Not that you're just in the race, that you finish the race. God has called, God has a, a destination for all of us. At right now, we're just in the journey stage. We're in the journey stage. But when we finish the journey, then there's the destination. There's a couple of things we must do in the journey to get to that destination. First, we must believe uh, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And as the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. We got the destination. Now, don't give up during the race. During the race. Now, Paul knew that as we kept running our race, that others might see us running this race, going toward the finish line. And in doing so, there is a prize. Uh, as we run, as we run for God, then God puts little prizes down for us, rewards for us, for continues to run. As we receive the prizes, then others see us gain the prizes. How then do we receive the prize? Because we kept running. Then others see us, how we got the prize, then they may want a prize, and then they might want to pick up the race and start running, running for God. Not just to be running because everybody else is running, running for a purpose because I have life. And because I have life, Jesus said, he will give me life more abundantly. And every time I'm blessed, I'm thanking God and God is blessing me. And so therefore, I'm continuing to receive the blessings because all God gives is good and very good. So if I keep running, I will receive good things. That's good news. That's another reason to keep running and don't give up. Uh, perseverance, persistence uh, is the prize. The Christian life was never promised as an easy way to live. Instead, Paul constantly reminds us that we must have a purpose and a plan because times will be difficult and Satan will attack. So what is our strategy? What, 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 what keeps us in the race that when the evil one tries to uh, throw the pit in front of the, the, the track uh, or, or, or put the monkey on your back to make you way down. What keeps us going? The love of God should keep us going. Uh, what Christ did should keep us going. And because we have the Holy Spirit in us, which is the guider uh, of all truth, it will keep, he will keep us going. And so now we, we, we see that as we persevere, uh, God continues to strengthen us through our faith. We have faith in God, knowing that he will guide us to all truth. He will oversee us as we run this race, as long as we don't give up. We don't give up on him, and he won't give up on us. So let's look at a couple of scriptures that bags all this up. All right. Our first, our, our next outline, I guess we just read uh, 9, 24 through 25. Let, let's go on to 26. Look at 26. Finish 25. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it 
to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it for an incorruptible crown. We run the race, or we do the things of God or through Christ uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit for this incorruptible crown, the uh, crown, the blessings that God bestow on us, uh, the good health, uh, the, the, the peace of mind, uh, the joy of heart, uh, the uncorruptible things. Uh, now, once, uh, once we find, keep the faith in God, the favor from God comes down, and then he will pour some corruptible things on us uh, to allow others to see uh, that God is able to supply uh, our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. As, as uh, Matthew says, uh, seek ye first. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things shall be added. We got some stuff. We got the needs. And then he supplies our wants. Amen. So he gives us the desires of our heart when we diligently seek him. And so <clears throat> if we finish uh, verse 25, but we in incorruptible verse 26 I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, not as I'm just going, just running, just to be running. I'm running for a reason. What is the reason that keeps you running? What is the reason that keeps you on your knees? What is the reason that keeps you coming uh, to church on Sunday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Bible study? What is the reason that keeps you listening to the word of God? What is the reason that keeps you praying at night or praying early in the morning? Uh, listening to sermons. What is that reason? What What is that power that, 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 that continuously lives on the inside of you that allows you to do those things? And once you understand that, then it should strengthen whatever that reason is. Amen. So he says here, <clears throat> uh, verse 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, not just doing stuff just to be doing it. I got purpose. I have life. I have life more abundantly. God gave me the purpose. Now I must fulfill the purpose. So I'm not just doing something just to be doing it. I'm just not showing up on Sunday morning just to sit there for two hours and go home, uh, leaving out the same way I came in. Why did I come in? I came in to hear the word of God because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more faith I have in God, the more God will be right there for me because I trust in him and he knows I trust in him. Amen. And so uh, as I keep my faith, then God will be right there on my side. So I don't just run as I'm, I'm doing things just like beating at. But I, verse 27, but I keep under my body <clears throat> and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Uh, I just can't do things, uh, tell you something, and do something else. Amen. So we have to keep that under submission. Least by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. I can't listen to my own words. Uh, I'm saving others, but me, myself, is going uh, the other direction. So Paul is saying I have to do this in a correct way. If I'm teaching you, I have to be the example to you. Amen. And so now we're getting to <clears throat> the rest of this outline wow. uh, of why we don't give up. And so uh, our purpose of, of 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 is to run to get the prize, run straight to the goal. Most of the time, we allow things to sidetrack us, uh, uh, little things that might throw us off course that the flesh might be interested in, but we know we should stay the, stay the course. Uh, it's like the Peter syndrome when he was walking the water. As uh, long as he kept his eyes on Christ, stayed on the water, went straight. But when he started to notice the wind and the waves and uh, the boisterous of the sea and, and probably came to his mind that I shouldn't be doing this, uh, walking on water, then that's when he began to sink. So once we continue to press, once we continue to run straight, once we continue to keep our eyes on Christ, keep our eyes on the prize, uh, then we will, excuse me, then we will fulfill the purpose. 
The plan is to practice strict self-control in order to keep straight, in order to stay afloat, in order to not be able to uh, get off course, we must practice that self-control. And then the prize, eternal life. Amen. If we stay the course, if we uh, do what God has already ordained us to do and stay on the right path, then it'll happen. We, we will get to the prize. We'll go from point A to point B very quickly. Uh, that's not to say we will ever get from point A to point B, but it takes a little longer, as we learn from the Israelites coming out of Egypt, to get to that promised land. Instead of the week or a couple of days journey, it took them 40 years. So not to say that when we mess up, God can't put us back in proper perspective. He will, and he can, once we repent of that. But it would be much easier on us if we continue the straight and narrow. All right, let us look at Galatians, the sixth chapter. I think we have time. <clears throat> Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse number seven. Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse number seven. And it reads, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if we're going to sow goodness into ourselves or perseverance into ourselves, then we should reap the benefits of the perseverance of finishing the, the race or finishing the course or finishing the project God has for us or the assignment that God has for us instead of thinking it's too hard or I can't accomplish this. Uh, the word can't shouldn't be in our vocabulary uh, as in doing uh, because the word says I can do all things and I can do it through Christ because he gives me the strength. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so if I have the strength to do it, I have Christ in me to do it, then it can be done. And so now I, 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 I have to maintain to know who Christ is so I won't be deceived. God is not mocked for so what, whatsoever man so that what he shall reap also. Now, this also says that if I reap good, I'll get good. Amen. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to his spirit shall reap spirit uh, of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And that and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we keep running the race, if we keep doing what we're doing, whether Anybody helps us or not, anybody says thank you or not, anybody pats you on the back or not, or back or not. if anybody doesn't uh, uh, put you on the head of the program or not, if you know what you're doing is right, keep doing it. God is watching. God knows your heart. God sees all, is all, and rewards all. He is rewarded of those that diligently seek him. And while we're doing good, while we're keeping the faith, while we're running the good race, he sees it. He rewards. Uh, uh, as Jesus said, what, 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 what you pray in secret, God rewards openly. What you do in secret, God rewards openly. So God is the one that is, is, is able to uh, uh, make these things happen for us as long as we're not doing it for the things, but we're doing it for God. Amen. And, and, and so for... Uh, uh, verse 9, verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, re, uh, shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season, in due season, not when you finish doing good, in due season, then we shall reap if we faint not. So just because we did something good today don't mean God is going to just open up heaven and pour it down on us today. Keep in the race. Keep in the fight. And it says in due season or in due time, when the time is right, then God will pour it out on you if we faint not. As we have thereof, verse 10, as we have thereof opportunity 
Take advantage of your opportunity. When God opens that door, you walk through it. If you know it is of God, walk through that door. Always take advantage of the opportunity. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men. All men. Not just the ones that look like you, smell like you, walk like you, talk like you. All men. White, black, blue, green, yellow, all men. Let us do good unto all men. Especially, Paul says, unto them who are of the household of faith, your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Please, sir, please, ma'am, we need to be on one accord now than ever before. Uh, if we're against each other in the church, how do you think we're going to gain somebody outside the church to come in the church when we're acting worse than they are? So we have to make sure that we are on one accord. We are on the same page. We are in the same boat, rowing the same way. So we can especially be kind to them uh, and do good to them that are in the household of faith, your own brothers and sisters. If we can't love them, how can we say we love God? We can't say we love God who we, we don't see and then hate our brothers that we see every day. God said it, it can't be. So he's, Paul is teaching us now that we have to let us do good to everybody, everybody, those that love you, those that hate you, those that, that, that talk good about you, those that talk bad about you, everybody. God don't care how they treat you. He cares how you treat them. Amen. And so now let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Keep in this race. Keep doing good. Keep persevering doing what you know is right. God will reward you openly. Amen. And so now, as we see in Galatians 6 and 7, don't get tired of doing good. Keep doing good because you know it's the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. Jesus kept doing good. Even though they, they ran him out of town, even though they wanted to kill him, he kept doing good. Let us keep doing good. Don't get discouraged. And I know most of the time, you know, we, we, it looks like we're doing it for not. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody cares. Uh, it's your idea. God gave it to you. You work it. Even if they don't agree with it, God gave it to you and not them. So even though they may look down on it, they might disagree with it, God gave it to you. You figure out a way to make it work. Amen. All right. And do good to everybody. And so the scriptures is, is telling us that uh, regardless of who they are, how tall, big, wealthy, rich, poor they are, do good to them. Uh, you never know who you're entertaining. You might be entertaining an angel unaware. Amen. All right. So the plan for us doing good is, is uh, our discipline, our bodies, and training. Self-discipline. And discipline, self-control uh, uh, and control of ourselves. And live to please the Spirit. Uh, if we do these things, because the Spirit is in the inside of us, uh, then it will, it goes to God. And God sends that message back down to the Spirit. So uh, that's how we get the desires of our heart. We have the Spirit in our hearts. And sometimes we don't know what to ask for. Or it takes that groans up in our prayer. So uh, have some, give something, give God something to work with in your heart. What do you desire? Uh, not to say that you're working to do it because we know works is not of that, but that there's got to be something that keeps you uh, uh, on the journey uh, to at least uh, give you evidence that, that God is still on your side. So uh, it could be uh, anything uh, that will allow you to Keep pressing for God, and God allows you to get that. So then, uh, He will. Uh, you you can stay in the fight because you know that God is on your side. All right, last last outline. Uh, turn to Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians three. 
And we'll look at verse 12. Philippians 3 and verse 12. What's up, Dwayne? <clears throat> Philippians 3 and 12. All right. It says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or obtained, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And so in staying in the race, I don't worry about my last losses. My last losses are now learns. And so now we, if you either you win or you learn. Uh, I, I remember Pippen saying one time you, he, he had amnesia. Uh, he, he, the last game, didn't, it, that was over and done. Uh, was on to the next. But he learned from those uh, things that wasn't successful uh, to make them right. And so now when we look at this, uh, we can't stay in the past. In order to go forward, you got to get out of the past. Uh, we can't live in past and future. Uh, we either in the future, going toward the future, or we're going to stick, stay stuck in the past. Uh, those things that were done back then, that was done back then. What were we doing now? What are we doing to enhance somebody? What are we doing to help somebody? Uh, what we did back then, that, that, that's, that was good for back then. What are we doing now? So, so, so Paul here is saying, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I, 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 I hadn't made it yet. I hadn't arrived. I, I hadn't done all the things that need to be done. I hadn't uh, got to the point of life that God wants me to be yet. So I still got some living to do. I still got some life to do. I still got some purpose uh, to do for God. So I hadn't apprehended yet. I can't just stop and say, hey, woo, I'm glad I'm done. No, I, I still have life in my body. I still have to press on. I still have to go on. But this one thing I do, forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those that are before. Now, the prize is not behind you. The finish line is before you. So I have to keep running in order to get to. So I can't look at the past. The only way I can look at the past is to be thankful, for, uh, uh, thankful to God for what he's brought me through. And so I can use that information. I can use that learning to press me forward. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press. I keep going. There's a call on my life and a call on all of our lives to keep going, to keep pressing for God, to keep doing what's right, continue to run the race, uh, regardless of what they try to do to you or try to bring you down or try to stop you or put stumbling blocks in your way. Use the stumbling blocks to go higher and higher. Use those, those obstacles to strengthen the body as you jump a little higher, or you jump a little further, or you run around to get a little faster. Uh, increase your endurance so when you get back on the straight and narrow, you've used all that stuff behind to press forward, to go faster, to run stronger. Amen. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul had uh, reason to feel sorrow about his past. He held the coats of those who uh, stoned Stephen. So he knew a little bit about past life. He knew a little bit about things that went on in the past. And now that he's pressing forward, he knows that old stuff wasn't good. So now he's getting rid of the old and now he's coming in the new. Uh, uh, old things are now passed away. Behold, now all things are now new. So he's pressing, he's going forward. He's uh, 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 forget about it, uh, uh, doing those things so he don't re-establish uh, that in his life. And sometimes we do have to do that. We have to get a new mindset, uh, get a new uh, a heart transplant, so to speak, a spiritual heart transplant, a new thinking in our mind that that old stuff has passed away. I don't do that anymore. I'm on the straight and narrow now for Christ. So now I'm looking toward the future. Uh, I, I'm learning from the past, but I'm running toward my future. We have all done things for which we are ashamed and we 
all live in intention of what we have been and, and what we want to be because our hopes are in Christ. However, we can let go of the past guilt. Let it go. You've asked for forgiveness. God has forgiven you according to 1 John, uh, for, uh, the first chapter, verse 9. So now all that is gone. We, we, he, he threw it in the sea of forgiveness. He separated from us as far as the east and the west. And now we're in good relationship with him. He picked us up and turned us around and placed our feet on a solid ground. And so now we can just run his race. We can get back in his good ordinances, get back into his will, get back into his commandments, and then run this race. And so once we are cleaned up for him, then he puts us right back in proper places as we've never messed up. Remember the prodigal son when he went away and, and the father was just looking for him day and day, out, day and day, out, day and day. Out. And when he finally came to his senses, as most of us has finally come to our senses that for God I live and for God I die. I got to do it God's way because my way wasn't working. So now let me get up. Let me get back into my right frame of mind and go back to my father. And what the father did, he made, he had a big party for him, uh, bringing him back as to his son, cleaned him up, put a signet ring on his finger, accepted him back. And that's what God does for us. So we don't have to worry about that part. All we have to do is stay the course and believe, trust, in God. Amen. So uh, the purpose of, 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 of doing this is to keep working toward that day when, when, when you will be with God wants us to be. And so we can't just say, okay, I, I feel like I'm at that point now I can stop. There's so much more God has for us to do. Um, we, 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 and the plan for us to do this is forget the past. Forget it. Let it go. Learn from it, but don't relive it. That sounds like it's hard to do, but it's very easy. This didn't work out. Can't do that no more. Let me go this route. The Spirit will guide us and lead us to all truths if we listen. And so we messed up because we didn't listen. Listening is very key. It's different from hearing. Hearing, I hear sounds. That's it. Listening, I'm understanding. And in all I'm getting, getting, get an understanding. Understanding tells us I must do it this way in order for it to be right. Amen. And so, so, so now we have to get the plan together. Let's forget in the past and reach, and, and reach toward the prize. And when we do that, the prize will be uh, uh, getting us closer and closer to God, getting us closer and closer to heaven. And so once we put these scriptures into practice uh, of, of persevering and don't give enough and, and, and keep running your race, the race that God has for you, that race for somebody else, yeah, it might look good, it might look, look promising. You might even see their prize. But God has you on your race. Stay in your race. Stay on your course and watch and see what God does for you because you did not give up. And Father, we thank you, praise and glorify you for all your many blessings. We thank you, God, for this time uh, with you. And we ask now, God, that you would bless the words that uh, you have given us, uh, the reasons why you have given us, the purpose that you have given us. We ask now, God, that you would bless everyone that is listening Bless everyone and their families, God. Continue to empower them by your spirit, by your words. Increase their faith, God, that they may see the miracles. They may see the blessings on their lives. We ask that you continue to heal the sick. We ask that you continue to bless those that are in financial situations. God, we ask that you bless every church, every pastor, every member. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. By faith in the name of Jesus is my prayer. And amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all for watching. Pray that you stay safe. Continue to wash your hands. If you have to go out, continue to mask up. Uh, as we, uh, God bless you. God keep you as ever our prayer as we continue to speak truth with power.